Thank you for watching our presentation about the basics of X-ray analysis of materials. The presentation is divided in four sections, an introduction to X-ray diffraction, a practical presentation of X-ray analysis of powder samples, and what questions can be answered for such samples, what XRD can be used for when analyzing thin films on wafers, and in particular, epitaxial thin films. Finally, the last sections will go over the critical steps for the structure determination of small molecule single crystals. The Iring Material Center has, amongst others, three diffractometers. A standard powder diffractometer, the Aries, outstanding for most powder diffraction applications. A high-resolution diffractometer, the Expert Pro MRD, which is modular, flexible, and offers high-resolution capabilities necessary for epitaxial single crystal thin films analysis. The last type of diffractometer we have is a small molecule X-ray diffractometer, the Smart Apex diffractometer, which can image the full reciprocal space and lead to single crystal structure determination. In this first section, let's first go over some of the basics about X-ray diffraction. In an X-ray diffraction measurement, the sample is probed using X-rays with a typical wavelength in the 0.3 to 2 angstrom. The typical X-ray lab source are copper K-alpha with a wavelength of about 1.54 angstrom, molybdenum K-alpha with a wavelength of about 0.71 angstrom, and cobalt K-alpha with a wavelength of 1.79 angstrom. As you can see, the wavelength of the radiation is in the same range as the interatomic distances in a solid, making it a perfect probe for analyzing crystals. I also always like to point out that the main interaction between the X-rays and the material is with the material's electron density and its electron density distribution. In first approximation, X-ray diffraction is very simple. All you need to remember is one equation. Bragg's law, which is lambda equals 2d sine theta. Lambda is a wavelength, d is the interplanar distances for a set of atomic planes, and theta is half the diffraction angle. XRD works on the principle of constructive interferences as a result of the infinite repeat of the interatomic distances in a specific direction of the crystal, infinite compared to the wavelength. Crystalline phases can be described using their building block, which are one of seven, listed here, and their space group, which defines the symmetry of the unit cell. For each space group, some family of planes will be visible, and some will not. The diffraction planes are labeled using HKL, and define the orientation of the plane within the unit cell. Now that we know some basics about XRD, what can it do for you? What is it good for? The most common application of X-ray diffraction is materials identification, based on comparison with known phases from a database as well as phase composition to determine how much of each phase crystal is present in a mixture. A second application is the analysis of epitaxial thin films. Epitaxial thin films are single crystal thin films grown on a single crystal wafer. From the data, we can determine the composition, strain, and thickness of the film. A third analysis is key to the analysis of a new single crystal material used to determine their structure. The diagram is a representation of the type of samples one would work with. Going from non-crystalline, amorphous material, such as window glass, where we can only provide extremely limited information, especially with a lab X-ray source. Moving to a random powder of crystalline phases, which is the bulk of the use of XRD. As the crystal grows, less orientations are present and the sample gives rise to texture, also known as preferred orientation. If the texture is such that most of the crystallites are oriented the same way, we move towards a strong texture, which can then move to a single crystal when the domain merge together and are connected.